Hello, welcome to Hope Church Harrogate's message of the week. If you'd like to connect with us, please do get in touch at hello at hopeharrogate.co.uk. We'd love to hear from you. I guess I have to start first Sunday in January by saying Happy New Year, to which you will reply, Happy New Year, and no one can hear you other than yourselves or people you're in the room with, but wonderful. Uh, and uh, welcome to 2021. Uh, I didn't get here first, but we're, we're here together uh, and uh, it will be, I'm sure, somewhat the same as last year, but also uh, a little bit different. I am going to speak for less than 10 minutes today. <gasps> wow, amazing. And uh, I want to start with a quick story, uh, which is a true real life story of something that happened to me. It's not very exciting, but it frames what I'm going to share this morning uh, really helpfully. You see, on one of my days off towards the end of last year, I took a walk uh, along the Beryl Burton Cycleway to Knaresborough. Can we get a whoop for Knaresborough? Whoop! And uh, a very nice walk, lovely crisp winter's day. And I got a coffee and a hot mince pie and I sat up by Knaresborough Castle and I looked down over the river, which is a stunning view, isn't it? Everyone's got it in their mind's eye and, uh, and had a lovely time. And, and on the walk there and back, I was listening to a preach and the preacher started with this question. He said, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you are 80 years old. Who do you want to be and what do you want to be like when you're 80 years old? Now, for some of us, uh, that's a bit of a different task because you're already there or you're nearly there. Uh, and I just want to say that I admire uh, all of those that are of a certain age in our church family immensely. Uh, and I often say to God, God, I want to be as passionate about Jesus as they are when I'm 80. You model it superbly for us. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of us that have a little way to go until we're 80, and even if you are 80, the question of who we are becoming is a really important one. So take a moment, close your eyes. What do you want to be like when you're 80? Who do you want to become? What do you want to be known for? Not, not famous for, but what would you want people who know you to say about you? How would you want people to experience you? What do you want to be like as an 80 year old? Just allow the Holy Spirit to nudge you and steer you and drop things into your heart. You might want to grab a pen and paper quickly, write it down, pull your phone out, put it in a note. You might just lodge it there, think about it later, talk about it over lunch. Hold on to it. I'm one of those people uh, who writes in their Bible. And there are all sorts of verses that I could use this morning for this short introduction to our first series of 2021. But the one I'm going to draw attention to, uh, which I think is really helpful in framing what we're going to do is highlighted in my Bible. And so I am going to show you the picture because I've written next to it as well. Not only do I highlight, I write in my Bible. And uh, here it is. I don't know if you can see that. Let me read it for you. It says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or, or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. As chance would have it, it's just a couple of verses on from the bit that Pete shared in our prayer meeting this morning and then in our worship time too, made me chuckle. And what you've probably noticed, because you were all dying to know what I've written next to this verse, is that I have scribbled down next to it a leader's most challenging verse. Imagine being able to write to people that you've lived with, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. Only, it's not just the most challenging verse for leaders. It's a challenging verse for us all. Paul's saying, copy me, imitate me, follow my example. In whatever you've seen, I'm worth being like. And that, friends, is a pretty bold 
claim. Over the next five weeks, uh, we are going to spend some time looking at five key cultural values in the life of Hope Church. Peter and I are going to spend a little bit of time laying them out, explaining what they mean and how we embody them together. Really, we're going to be ask, answering this question, which I've just had you uh, consider for yourselves. Who do we want to be as a church? What do we want those around Hope or joining Hope to get caught up in? What do we want people to copy, to imitate, to follow our example in? Because this really is about all of us, not just those somehow designated as leaders. All of us are putting ourselves out there as a church family and saying, hey, join us and be more like us. That is, after all, what culture is. It's the, a way of doing things, a way of being that fills a group of people and catches other people up in the same way. It's a bit like if you've ever been in a circular swimming pool and you get a bunch of you to run around in the same direction, you can create a great current so much so that you can lift your feet up and it will carry you around and around and around. If someone gets into the pool once you've started it, they will get carried around the same way that you're going. It's very difficult, in fact, impossible, once you've got it going, to go the opposite direction because the uh, flow of the pool, the, the culture of the place you've entered, makes you go the same way, causes you to imitate what's been going on already. People can't help traveling in the same direction when they enter the pool. And it's the same in any group of people. There is a culture that will capture people up and take them in the same direction direction and so we're going to look at the five key cultural values for Hope Church that we're looking to establish and grow in and build towards together so that that is what Hope is known for so that people who come and join us get swept up in the same direction those who are around the edge start to find that they are um, infiltrating into their lives too. Some of the five are pretty established we're doing quite well of them as a church they're the things that people comment on uh, when they visit or when they join you will have had people say to you just as I've had people say to me many of the same words again and again and again about their experience at hope in a minute I'm going to invite you to play a little game and to lean forward and to type those into the chat box so time to get your memory functioning uh, others uh, over the next five weeks that we'll talk about they're, they're slightly more aspirational uh, they're still taking shape amongst us. We, we do it a little bit, but we would love to do it more because we know that these are the things that God is calling us to be as a church family. We're praying that a long time before hope is 80 years old, this is who we are. Fun fact, hope is 10 years old this year. October 2011 was the first public regular Sunday morning meeting that uh, in the life of Hope Church. And so I'm sure we'll mark that come the autumn. Some people are looking at each other now going, I'm sure we met before that. We did. But the public launch was the first Sunday in October 2011. Uh, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently over the next five weeks. Peter and I will be doing an introduction to each of the cultural values uh, and sort of explaining a bit of, of what it means for us. Uh, and then there will be time discussing how it works out for us in breakout rooms. So this is your warning. The next five weeks will involve you using your brain and your voice when you come to church. So please remember to bring both. I know uh, at this point in the year, you're like, I can use my brain and my voice at the same time. We're all coming off the back of Christmas, I know. But by next Sunday, we will be able to use both again at the same time time brain and voice as we discuss these cultural values together so who fancies a game about three of us great i was really hoping to be able to get technology to work in such a way that we could have like a family fortune style game where people are trying to guess the five and i could reveal them and there'd be noises and points but technology defeated me i wasn't able to get there so the game is simply this think about what people who have visited or started attending Hope or your experience as you joined uh, 
how did you first experience hope? What did you find us to be like? Uh, what do you think our culture is defined by? Uh, and why don't you lean forward? You can have two goes each. Uh, type it into the chat box. What do you think I might be about to reveal as one of our cultural values? Those of you who have already seen them, please don't cheat. No one likes a cheater. <coughs> Family, welcoming, we are family. Yes, woo, friendly, Bible-based preaching, caring, loving, open to God, prophetic, acceptance, friendly, spirit-filled, love and adore Jesus, yes. Superb, you have 30 more seconds. I'll keep reading them because there are people watching on YouTube who can't see your wonderful typing. Joyful, down to earth, at home, real, generous, word and spirit, family. Uh, Jesus, growth enabling, kind. Oh, I like being called kind. That's nice. Relational, outward looking. Brilliant. We don't fear vulnerability with each other. That is absolutely true. And basically, oh, someone on YouTube has said family. Superb. Uh, basically, every word that's just been typed into the chat box will feature repeatedly in the next five weeks. But would you like to see? Uh, the way that we summarized it, because it's a hard job. It took us a lot of conversation, uh, a lot of drafts. Uh, this is my version four, I think, but I'm pretty sure it got tweaked a few times, uh, mid-version. Uh, oh, they're still coming. Brilliant. Thanks, Susan. We'll just put that as number six. I like that one. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Are you ready? I think in the true... Gemma style, we need a drum roll. Whew. Here you go. So we've got God first, family, grace, word and spirit, and legacy. So let me just expand on each of them very briefly without stealing anything from the next five weeks. We want God to be first in everything. Church is family above organization. Grace is why we're here and it's how we live here. In uh, the podcast I do with Mark and Rachel, we talk about grace being for life, not just salvation. Borrowing the RSPCA's uh, dog is for life, not just for Christmas mantra. A fourth word and spirit, friends, it is word and spirit. It's never either or. Uh, and finally, legacy. Here's the truth. Children leave a legacy that servants don't. And, uh, and we want to be those who have our minds fixed, not just on the immediate, but on the legacy we're going to leave pastors. Those are the five. Uh, and we will spend uh, time over the next five weeks unpacking them and going into more detail. They will also look a lot nicer than that because I asked Ella to make some nice slides for them. So it will look a bit better next week when we pop up with uh, week number one, looking at what it means that God is first in everything for us. Friends, the reality is that at the beginning of 2021, you might have noticed it is still difficult to make plans. It's very difficult to make any kind of declaration about what we are going to do and when. But we can absolutely talk about who we are becoming. And for many of us, we're able to do that with a lot more clarity than ever before after the reflection that's been initiated by life through 2020. It has made many things clear for us, hasn't it, living through the last 12 months. Often we start years with Vision Sundays, and if vision is where we're going, culture is about who we are becoming. And we are really excited to see how God shapes and steers us all in these five areas over the next five weeks as we take a look at who we are and who we are becoming, who we want to be in God as a church family. You excited for the next five weeks? Sound like a good thing to do? Wonderful. Let, let me pray for us for a moment. Why don't you just position yourself before the Lord? <coughs> Father, we're so thankful that Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. 
we're so thankful that you've invited us into something that we get to be a part of, that we get to shape as co-creators with you. We're so thankful that you've given us your Holy Spirit, that Jesus, you said it's better for us that you would leave so that you could send the counsellor to us. And we're so thankful that we have the Holy Spirit, God himself with us, in us, helping us, guiding us, bringing us peace. Truly, the God of peace is with us. And we pray, God, would you shape us as a church family this year? God, we want to look and sound and live and love more like Jesus in our everyday lives. And we love that we get to do that together and we love that we do that as spirit empowered people. And so we pray, come, help us even now as we have written down on our scrap of paper or still lodged in our brain, what we felt you putting in our hearts about who we are to be in our lives going forward. We pray, would you by your spirit bring about that harvest of righteousness, those fruits of the spirit in our lives that we might show the world what you're like, both individually and together. We really want to let the world see what you're like, because you're amazing. And encountering you has changed everything for us. Amen. <laughs>